be open, in my opening. Yes, ma'am. Seven oh five. Opening. Um, we didn't do an agenda because that would fall on you, unless we're going to delegate it to everybody, to someone else. Yeah. So, um, well, I was kind of thinking that we wouldn't be here very long because if the program's going to be cut, I don't know if we should be wasting our time, to be honest with you. So, um, I can tell you two things that I've done so far regarding, so I don't even know how to go basketball. So, basketball needs to, is starting. Um, I texted Rich, um, emailed Rich, and asked about um, starting open gyms. So generally that's what we do for the month of November, is we have open gyms for two nights out of the week. And then we kind of get our numbers for teams from those kids that have shown up. So that's kind of last year how we decided um, to do, we only had one team that was fourth, fifth, and sixth grade boys. That was our most... Um, we only had that meant those kids to fund uh, uh, to do a team. So we, uh, I just, I have to fill out. Although Lori may not give that to you, building, building, building use, something or other. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what the um, the cost is for the open gym? There's no cost. There's no cost. No. Right. No. So the only cost is for when they go to a tournament, so to say, or when we have games and there's a, a ref. Although last year we did. We had two volunteer refs for home game for home games, so we only paid out for two games for a ref. Um, so, yeah. So I'll have a better idea, like once we start that. We have not done money for basketball. No, it's not, not during the week. I know. Yeah, just only for the weekend. Sure. I don't know. When does it end? We ended last year somewhere. At the end of February, I believe. So that's this year. Yes. Okay, so some of the money is used already. But but like she said, the only cost was, was the two reps rip. for like thirty dollars. And we right. did one tournament so, which yeah. we paid for before. Um, like in twenty eighteen, I think. Yes. Okay. So that might. So there be, is some money. Yes, I know yeah. That. I just don't know how much. Um, and actually, I, and I meant to say that while we were in that <laughs> meeting was um, Summersworth wrecked for the first time in a very long time is not having a basketball program. So that one tournament that we entered, which is called the Frosty Tournament, mm -hmm. which has been, I, I would assume they're not doing that, they're not hosting that at all. So and that would, they have to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be a, a different tournament that we could um, we'd have to look for to enter. Um, and Farmington has one, and uh, Marshwood does one, but I think those are returning at the same time. But they're roughly like two hundred dollars a tournament, so you know, we collected three hundred fifty dollars last year for our twenty five bucks a kid. So you know, kind of covered our one tournament and our rep also. What was the fee? Twenty five dollars. And that wasn't until after this open. The open gym thing is for, is free, and mm -hmm. it's inviting as it, we do it just for third. We did we third through six last year, so we have a one hour for third and fourth graders, and then an hour um, the second hour for fifth and sixth graders. So I talked to him about Tuesday, Thursday, starting in November from six to eight p.m. Text me if you need some help. <laughs> I'm glad you said six. Yes, I know. Because um, you guys are play, right? When we have play. that, and um, Funtime runs the building, and for part of their, um, not certification, whatever they call that, they have to be able to have kids moving. Oh, so that's they have to be out of, thing. They have to be out of a classroom and and use the gym. Yeah, in order to. Yeah, but they're out before six, right? Yes, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah. I'm glad oh, okay. you said yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's good. So it shouldn't interfere. Yeah, so we'll go six to seven for third, fourth, and seven to eight for the six. Um, and then we usually we'll do that uh, so what seven was times or something like that in November. Reiterate uh, time frames. Three grades, three, four, we when? Six to seven p.m. And then um, fifth and six or seven to eight. Yeah. 
I got so that. So they would start November. Although, November all November we just meet in the library. School board's on Thursday, so. Yeah, there's one Thursday, and he already kind of mentioned to me that you guys could move the school board meeting. Is that boys and girls, or just boys? Yep, we do boys and Both. girls together. Yeah, the open gyms are all, everybody together. And then that's where we kind of figure out. Last year we had hardly any girls, which was kind of sad. But weren't there girls going to summers, right? That was the year before, I think. Yeah, two years ago they went to summers. Last year, I think, if any of the girls went to uh, March with for that. Um, so here's my question to you guys. So we're covered basketball under... So I need, I, I need to get an insurance um, thing to Rich. I don't know. He he said he would look into when last year's expired, but it's got to be right around now. I thought he already told me it expired because that's why we had to do a new one for a rec. I was going to say that the new one for rec should be the same. It's insurance is insurance, yeah. right? So isn't that good for a year? It yeah. is good for a year. So maybe we don't have to look at that then. I'll check with you. If you could, thank you. Yeah. It's not a big deal to send another one. But, right. You know, if we can wait. It, that's so good. then what happens if in January, if there's no wreck, about would that be something we'd have to look into getting insurance for those kids to play basketball? It, well, so when we're talking about no wreck, I think the board is primarily talking about team camp um, and or camp Raleigh. Yeah. I, you know, camp basketball is such a Low money. yeah and small lift that mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's really. A consideration at this yeah, point. Okay. So then I don't have to worry about that. I don't, no, don't think so. Okay. okay. All right. I have one other thing, but I, I can't remember what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I want to refresh your mind, Maria, minute. Meeting minutes. Two of them went, two sets of meeting minutes went out at the end of September. Did anybody read them? Mm, and no. If I did, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Because they were from one from June and one from our September 15th meeting. And they're now on the drive. Do I need to resend them? No, because I'll do that. Now, are you 100% up to date on your minutes? Working on it. I have more to do. Um, the October 16th minutes are in draft form and we'll be getting them. So then we'll have three to accept. Uh, Hopefully more than that. Okay. Uh, um, do you have the names of those people that you just said there were two that were interested? Kelly in? Beck and Michael Blau. Oh, do you know that? I know. I know, I know the kids. I, know. I know both of them. Um, one has utilized the camp and one is a soccer coach and Oh, okay. Very um, bright it has three kids um, that are young. So, one of the things that is going to be a requirement in order, if this goes forward, is the responsibilities of each party of what they, what their job was to do to make sure that we understand what the job is. And has anybody worked on that? Yes. Yours? I reviewed, it's in Caroline's inbox because my email was not working, or my printer was not working. Um, and I wrote up, at the last meeting and previous meetings it was discussed to do hours and then um, any other jobs that we saw happening. So I did... Uh, what was I working on today? I did what I do for grants and wrote that up. A very similar one for donations. And what I do individually, how I go through the committee, what I need from the committee, what we need from the director of the camp. Um, I did events, um, like how we figure out what events or state parks we're going to. And then I did a third one that I work on, and I also 
reviewed what Caroline or somebody had put on the drive regarding staff and made it a little bit more um, detailed based on what I know for hiring because Kelly said she was not going to do hiring anymore. <laughs> so she's got a lot documented about committee roles with, um, with, with, with certain functions and whether or not it's an individual or the, you know, what, the, what part the whole committee is responsible for. Camp administrators, I, I would think you're talking about rec directors, like the... Either rec director or camp director. Like, or making sure that, like, they have one of the things that was in the employee handbook is that they have a binder every time they go on a field trip with the site's emergency officer, all the staff cell phone numbers, and um, all the emergency sheets in it. And so, like, I said, should we be compiling that since we're setting up all the venues or and give them a copy of it or should they have, should they be doing that research on that? Okay, so this is really great because it's, a, it's got a lot of stuff, but I think it's like pizza is, is, a, is you know, pizza to my mind is not its own item, but yeah. it's, it's a task of somebody's. So whose task is it? Probably the summer camp director, like the camp rally director, but then there are parts of it like for the whole committee to decide where are we getting pizza from this year and so things. So so you're right, like parts of it are in, in some person's hand and some um what I'm trying other. to get the point across is that there's people who have a lot of responsibilities and not everything's getting done. Which, not, right. That's, Which, that's the problem. Right. And, and so there's people who can take on things, so we need to release and that right. you volunteered for some of it. There's things that we can do to lighten the load. Right. So that if, if you're going to take minutes, you're going you're gonna to take minutes and that's your job and you're going to have it available within the five days after the meeting and all like Which that. Which is a requirement um, and that for if, the town. And, and, and so, you know, the people who are signing up for that know that that's the requirement when they're signing up for it, and everything's like on the table for that. Like, so, okay, so here's my question. When we formed a committee, a rec committee, where was the policies and procedures for our committee from the select board I that, wasn't told us, that is to tell us, like, I don't, I don't know that minutes need to be done in five to seven minutes, or five to seven days. Right. So, right. So where is that information? Ex well, exactly. Like, the, I mean, <laughs> you're right. That's I, but, why, but why is that our responsibility? That's coming from your I office. Wasn't the, as, I wasn't the select board at the time. It was oh, Jody. Okay. So, I don't know what she told you or didn't tell you. I'm just telling you, now... That is a requirement for any organization within the town to have those that, That's not something the board is it's, putting on this group. That no, is just a general rule about all boards and committees. Committee. Okay, well, where is that? I want to see that listed down so that you hand that to me so that our committee knows what exactly those policies and, and procedures so, are. So that would be like minute taking is a role. Oh. And so that would be part of the job description. But, of see, that. but you're asking me to come up with that. But you're dictating what that is. I'm not dictating anything. I think it's the select board is. Yes, well, you are. You're well, saying to actually, us that we have to write this down. I want to know when, how am I supposed to know that as a townsperson? Where not, is the information? You're that, not necessarily. And so, so this yeah, is why we're working we need to together. We to break it down. Sorry, Seriously, we but do. But I, I am so we are trying to make this Denise. work. But, but you yelling at me is not the answer. Okay, so we need to bring it down. I'm trying to say that every person needs to put their responsibilities that they have been in charge of in writing. So we can divvy up the, the process to everyone. That's not what's happening right now. So she had an enormous load on her this year, and things fell through the cracks. We need to stop that. That's why we're asking for this to be done. But we don't all know what you guys did on every part of your job. And That's why she was asking for this. And you're not expected to know everything. Right. We're here to help you figure out pieces and parts, and there are parts of it that we don't know either. We've got to right. figure this out together. So is there a place they could find the rules of the game? <laughs> So that's what they're asking for. So, I mean, I'm some just asking, tell me what you did. And I, your responsibilities is really what I was looking for for you, okay? And yours, and yours. So then we know, yeah, you were overloaded this year. 
there was a lot of things that you did that were very time consuming and there's some balls that got dropped and you have to own that. And I own you that. Know. And, and so I, we're trying to stop that. And I will say that it's not all that it was this group. Um, I would say that some of it was in my own personal life that distracted me and pulled me away from here that required okay. my attention elsewhere. And I am willing and I have accepted help and David and I talked a little bit by email. He created on there for under some. It said um, to an envelope to send to vendors that require it in writing. Mm -hmm. So he created an envelope, which is an email to all of us. Mm -hmm. So let's put that on the drive. And I have on the drive already I um, a lot of the groundwork. What I'm trying to say is that I guess there's different thresholds of what we see and different perspectives of what we see the workload being. And I see that the groundwork for a lot of this was created in the past three years. And since you're new to coming onto this committee and I've been here for two years. I'm not okay. new. But okay. I wasn't the originator. So I don't know what happened before me. So the groundwork that was laid is there and I have like a list of vendors and people I know to go to, people I know that won't give us money. <coughs> Kathy Rizzoli and I used to sit down and divvy up the fundraising. Um, and I'm willing to sit down and meet with a subcommittee and do that again. Um, I'm not saying that I have to do it all. And I'm sorry if I come across that way. I, it's a character flaw of me that I strive to be perfect and to try to do as much as I can and things do fall through the crack. Mm -hmm. That is something I am working on personally and I don't appreciate um, there are certain ways I deal with it better than others. So, um, but well, I, I think, think you took, I think you, I mean the three huge things first of all, you taking notes and being a grant writer and trying to be our fundraiser was just yeah, it was a lot too much. much. Well, it's a lot. Yeah. It's too much for any one right. person. That's not, not just about you. you. It's about any one so person. And so, do it right. If you, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think the best case scenario is that all these jobs are broken down individually, and each of you takes less, mm -hmm. and that we have enough people that you can still spread them all out and get them all done. Right. But that way, you have room in your life to have a personal life, and stuff can happen. And, and stuff will still be okay because personal stuff will happen in anybody's life. But we need to make sure that the program is okay, even though it was going to happen that distracts us from this. So, you know, you've got two more members. We can certainly put David to better use here. Um, and, and maybe we can get some more volunteers. Um, we did have some interest, but no commitment, right? We had seven people email me with what's the time commitment and what's involved and I was admittedly kind of vague in that response because I don't really know what, you know, we, we haven't done this before, but I was pretty straight up with what we know has to get done. It's a lot of work, but many hands makes lighter work and so um, I got two people to commit to helping in one way or another. So, um, I would hope that we can increase that. I know of a person who, I don't know if he sent you a letter, Tony. No. He send you? No. I think he only went through Facebook. He, he can't make a meeting. He just can't. <laughs> but he was willing to do what I do, be the liaison between Rich, the building, and here. Um, so once he saw my name, he figured that was covered. But he would um, be interested in editing or writing letters and stuff like that, that we will need, but he won't be able to, he won't make a meeting. And I don't think that, you know, but I think if it's part of the committee, then he can do stuff off-site. He doesn't yeah. necessarily right. have to be here to right. be part of the committee. 
And I think he would be a wonderful resource to be looking at what we sent out to sure. uh, for fundraising and, and, and stuff. And if he can give us that much, that takes it off of somebody else's plate. And I would welcome him. Absolutely. So he was on RAC at one point. Yes. Right. Well, and and as long as part, he's yes. sort of aware of when the rec <coughs> meetings are, so that he knows that like when we would need certain things by, or when we'll be talking about certain things. Or asking questions. You know, I would welcome anybody to help in the background, um, as long as they have a way to get the information to the group so that we can have it and use it and discuss it and like that. But ultimately, when it comes to getting jobs done, we're going to need a way to, they're going to have to be good communicators, and that can be a little bit more challenging if they're not here before us in a regular way, which doesn't mean it can't be workable, but it's just something else to But even to looking out. at the manuals for, you know, someone who is an educator, someone who deals with children all the time, just looking and just getting a different, you know, perspective, perspective yeah. um, he would be wonderful at that, so. Do you want to talk to him I about that? Okay, and if he has questions, he certainly can call me as well. And Suzanne had mentioned that she has somebody she knows who, um, mm -hmm. maybe... To be a rec director, though. Not to be a... Well... But not until next June. Isn't that what she said? Oh, well, she's retiring in June, but she didn't know if she may be helpful in some way in the okay. time. So I misunderstood well, that. That's I'm, kind of where I, I I'm thought she said sure. someone that she so. might want to do it, but it wouldn't be until June. That's what I heard her. That's what I thought I heard her say. So, okay, but we so. can we can get more information. You want to be in public. Well, and talk you don't about want to drop somebody's name. Yep, or, yep. So maybe yeah. you can. I can follow. Yeah, up next time you see her, or I'll see her tomorrow night. Oh, you have to be right. Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> So we heard like so we can kind of find out where the rules of the games are. So like we didn't know about the five five day rule. Where where do well, we find this information? Or who, to, or who to, what contact do we need to make to find out so that we are in compliance? Well, that's what that is what every secretary's position here is in town. I mean, what I don't know if it's an unwritten rule or if it's no, it's a written. It's, it's somewhere. It's, it's a written I mean, rule somewhere. It's, it's just it's, what the expectation is on any so, committee or. I don't, I don't know how to point you in that direction. There are a number of laws according, you know, depending on what it is you're trying to find out. But I think um, as long as, you know, we can review those things. I guess, you know, I think, I think the starting point is to get the job descriptions written um, as, as comprehensively as the person who did that job or knows that job best can write it. And then we'll review them because I think every other person also has insight into things about that job, like the five to seven days that probably only I would know and you might know that we wouldn't expect you to know. There aren't really good reference materials for that kind of thing. And I'm not, and that's part of the problem. I'm not sure what the reference materials would be for some of these other things, like the is for recreation programming. That's you know, looking to other communities for, for what they have and then trying to make them fit for here and then reviewing them to make sure they really do fit for here. So that's such a not very helpful answer, except okay. that I think we'll get through I think there's a lot know. of unwritten rules that people have followed the, you know, for the whole thing, but I think it's the expectation, too, because I know planning, zoning, select board, I mean, it, they have to have a, a budget committee has to be done with them. Five five days, and that to it can the be draft just available. Right, it has to be draft. Okay, I guess in my world, I can't. It can't be a black. I work on equipment that if I mess up, people are going to die. So I, I'm kind of used. To, I know the rules. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you can tell the manual. Oh, you're right, and you follow right, the manual. You're right. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that this committee can't put something in. Or we should. We're working on policies, anyways, with on the select board side of it. Very painfully one at a time, but we have a new policy now, a new procedure now that we just voted last week. It's first reading, second reading, final. One, two, three weeks. It's done. We're not prolonging them any longer. So that's what we're starting to do. But that's just for, that's No, I understand what you're saying. That's from my point of view. I get it. What I did for yep. I got it. I understand that for sure. Um, what is it what would be your expectation on a rec director? What do you see for a rec director? I, I think 
what needs to happen is you that you're taking us out of what um, and I don't even know if a rec director can do this, but can you have your rec director, you know, take the time cards and sign the time cards and um, handle the cash from uh, school to um, I don't know, Caroline, if she, you have to be a part of that. Um, okay. Again, yeah. a job description for the rec director that would have to be approved by the Board of Selectmen. Well, but so, it also would be an employee. Right. So it's different when it's an employee versus a seasonal employee. So if you're looking at something, yeah, if you're looking for something for 52 weeks a year, whether or not it's not every week or monthly or whatever, then that person would be hired as an, as an employee. It certainly can't be 40 hours because we're not going right. to be doing benefits or any of well, that kind of stuff. But so you have to kind of think about what do you see in that position for time, or at least approximately the time right. in which you... Because you just actually screwed my head into what I needed to say. So, so rec director, well, first of all, everything I do for basketball could go under rec director, mm -hmm. which is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all scheduling. Mm -hmm. So that could be done <coughs> elsewhere. So I, I schedule all the games and all the practices, mm -hmm. and, and then I hire all the refs and schedule the refs and um, make sure Caroline staff. has their... Um, Can't have a staff member in the building. Yeah, but we have always done our games now during the week, so I don't have to worry oh, about that. Because, so, because yeah. janitorial staff is there, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, scheduling, what else did you say basketball would do? Well, I have to schedule games, coordinate games with all uh, other towns, home and away. Um, refs for home. Refs for home. Make sure that we have the building for home. Um, and then I did want to, I, I, I had texted Celia, and so I got in touch, well, I knew I had something else to tell you. Um, I got in touch with Sarah from the library, so this could also, about senior programming, so we have three dates lined up for coffee hour at the library. So um, we tried to keep it, I tried to go with like the fourth Friday is what Celia and I talked about, but then we didn't think that was a good idea because the library actually isn't open and they thought it would be much better if we came in in case they wanted to do something like with computer help or checking out a book or, you know, maybe we could bring in a, a programming of some sort. So, so it's Thursdays now. So we have a Thursday, October 31st at 10 and we'll be doing that in the, um, that the other room there, mm -hmm. the back room. And then she said um, November 21st, which would be the Thursday before Thanksgiving. And then December 19th at 10. So all at 10 o'clock. Uh, so those three. How are we going to get that go, going out to people? I figured now that we have it lined up, um, let's get a couple get it posted, do a posting um, through the town, and um, you could ask Rich to put it in his newsletter. What is the deadline for the, the thing that goes out with the tax bills? Um, by the end of this week, really, Selma's trying to get it. So okay. send her, send Selma a little blurb about um, coffee hour, coffee at the library, and what dates and times it, yeah, we for seniors. Seniors, but we're not saying, you must be seniors. <laughs> no, no, that's, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you, if anybody wants to, but I mean, mean, if, if, if people like, should be able to place themselves. Yeah. Right, but I mean, if like Rich could just put a little blur. That's you, also helpful. I think whatever news, avenues you can use. Newsletter that he just your mm -hmm. coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, Facebook and social media, put it out on social media. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, when we do postings, it goes at the post office here and at the library, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, but you might also um, contact St. Mary's because there are a number of seniors who attend St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and St. Mary um, and seniors are 
um, not necessarily going to get the, any emails or be on social media. And they some may, of them are. Put it in their bulletins. Yeah. You know, the trust bulletin they might put in there. Maybe not for the October one. I don't know how long, that how quickly they get them done, but and then, at least November and December. Yeah. Um, putting out a couple sandwich boards if we can get um, posters printed for that. I don't know if that's a capable ability we can do at town level, or if we could go to a printer and have it done. We have money in our budget. How for much money do you have? Three hundred dollars. We haven't used any of our senior money. But how much is this going to cost you? We just figured like fifty dollars each time. So maybe what we should do now is make a motion to spend up to um, fifty dollars per coffee hour for refreshments for a total of one hundred and fifty dollars um, to get us started. Are you making a motion? Sure. <laughs> so I need a second. I'll second. I'll second. I'll I think the sandwich boards is a great idea. I don't recall how much they cost to print. Um, in theory, you could print them once and then order a bunch of number stickers or and, and word stickers so you can you know replace November with December. Or, or, or have the date be 10, 20, 1, 19 and just put new numbers over the old numbers or things like that. Um, Is it something the school would let them put it on? Print. Uh, well, print or laminate so you don't have to put as the long expense. As fits in the laminate or I can ask for it. But it would, even if you just do a poster board, the full-size poster yeah, board. Yeah, full-size poster board laminated should fit in the AV. And I think that's just about the size of the... I will tell you they don't right. last. But like even if you could get, get a green. Yeah, if you can get a couple of them, no, that's fine. you know, that would be good. So if um, if it's a possibility, I'm going to ask if we can eliminate six poster boards, which will give you three signs because right. they're double sided. Yeah. Yep. I think that's probably your most effective way of getting the word out because every you know people do drive around town mm -hmm. and they'll see it. And so. Um, if we do sandwich boards, do we have a location that we would like to place them? One possibly by the fire station on the island? Well, that by the fire station is kind of it's weak, weedy it's weedy and hard to read. But maybe the is there still one over by coming off the overpass? So I would suggest when you come off the overpass directly ahead, that's a half Looking a at sign. The Cemetery. Because it leans against the post yeah. there, so that's a half a sign. Likewise, at the end of Rollins Road right. at Janco, yeah. there's a there's a post directly across the way, and that's another half a sign. You could use a full sign at the end of Roberts Road on Route Four. Like Garrison players. In that area. And then you still have one more sign that you could put, maybe at the corner of Short Street and Route Four, or. Um, or in front of the fire station is not bad if you cut down the weeds. But yeah, you know. but you could put one over on the on the grass area after the new parking lot was done. You know, yes, you, if you, you could put, put one over there with that yeah. stone there that has the picture. Yeah. You could put That's it there yeah. facing both facing it so you can see it both directions coming in. Okay. You could do that. Do you have to ask? Do you ask anything? I don't think you have to ask. You don't have to ask. As long as it's on property town properties. properties. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just um, be careful as we get into winter because when it snows, you know, it the signs have to get taken down and pick, yeah, and it's put back. It's, it's state a, road too, it's so it's like. Can I, I just ask, where are the sandwich boards? Are they the same? <laughs> well, because these sandwich boards have been the ones that I'm thinking of, the, the yellow, yellow ones. ones. Mm -hmm. They were like what I remember, and it could be completely incorrect. They were owned by the PTO and the town? Or no, the PTO, PTO and the fire department? Fire department. Half and half. So, <laughs> at one time they were in the shed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. At one time they were in the shed at school. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't, it's not something I see. So, I don't. What did the school use when they advertised like the play that's and stuff? Oh, okay. Okay. So, that's what I, I'll find out how many signs we have and where they are. 
Yeah, I mean, I, 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 there was, I thought, six. I thought was, that's what I or, thought, Yeah, so the five pound hit the three in the town. That's when we were doing our craft fair and all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And PTO, we, we hooked up with them. And yeah. So we did use them. We have some here. We use them for voting and, and some other things. So um, you just got to keep in mind that if you're going to use the ones we have here, um, when if, if it's going to get in the way of the deliberative session or town budget, public budget, you know, all the big, big meetings, they're and not available at that, that time. Yeah. 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 But we don't but we're pretty, do so much with it. These deliberate. three, we're pretty not, we're not even going to be involved in that. Yeah. Uh, the school uses them more for just, well, please vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't. So, well, we will have $150 left in the senior budget if we spend $50 per coffee hour on beverage. Is this just coffee? Coffee donuts. Yeah. Coffee and donuts, or coffee <laughs> and snacks. Maybe you get something. But... I was going to say, you know, so it's like, I, I would bake brownies or whatever, if you, you yeah. know, if you pick. So, do we want to set aside any you know, money for printing if the school doesn't come through? Oh, it's 10 a.m. No. Okay. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> um, that would work good. I didn't hear your question. Do we want to make a motion to set aside money in case the school can't come through and go to a printer? I think it's going to cost you more than that. Don't you? So, do you want me to ask much? if I can print signs at school? Yeah, yeah that's what she says. Yeah. I thought you wanted laminated. Well, I think you need to have them both. Well, I know that. I know that Miss Allison loves making. Clear Okay, so I will ask what about. I will ask Rich, and then I will ask Allison. Because she she uses publisher, which I do have on my laptop at school. But I will ask her because she loves to do it. Well, but you also have to have a way to print on big. It usually prints in sections, and then you take them together. Yeah. Yeah. And then laminating it kind of seals yeah. it so it doesn't fall yeah. apart. Spraying with what? Yeah. Clear Lacker. coating. Clear coating. Back to, back to front. Is that rain resistant, do you think? I don't know. We're talking about paper here. Yeah. We're talking about a clear, a clear spray, the arc, arc spray. Like, all right, I, yeah, I heard, the, yeah, the arc spray. Yeah, I know. I, I just I never text with wood, wood, but I didn't know it would protect rain. the paper. Oh, I'm some of the wood's paper, some paper's paper. Yeah, you the know, I, paper okay. I've used it, I just don't. I've used it on like, ceramic and wood, but I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Well, I'll find out about paper. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. See, what, see what he'll do first, and then we can experiment. Experiment. Because <laughs> I know for the 1100 printing things I got through BMV printing, um, that cost me two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I know that's Jean, eleven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred prints, though. I know Jean does the play at school mm -hmm. and takes them together. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking maybe staples or or even like Zazzle. Well, does what if you do? Wait a minute. What if you do one? Because if you're just doing, if we're just three talking about three cup, dates. Do one just, with all three dates. No, just do one without the dates on it and have a universal one and then get the the sticker things. Yeah, because the, the, the canvas on ones that. will last forever. The right. canvas will last forever and then you can tape like date. your clear t packing tape, you can put your date on there. And when you take it off, it's not gonna tear it because it's heavy vinyl. Right. Check and why don't you check and see before you um you see how well, how big of a, what's the size of a poster board? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's no, approximately either. like a poster board. I think it's size. a poster board size. So whatever size. So, size. so we, if you can get it, vinyl ones. We can get five by, like, five foot by seven or oh, so three by eight. two. Three it's by good. two, maybe? <laughs> three feet by two feet. No, it's not I even that. What's the size of poster board? What's the size of poster board? I want to say maybe. We can measure it. It's just in the other room. But yeah. um, poster Well, I think yours are taller, aren't they? Yes. Me, I, don't, I think the inset, though, for the, for the sign itself, though, I think that's the same. I, I could be wrong. But you can get, if you get the smaller ones, and then you can just have senior coffee or whatever you want to fit on that, and then you leave the bottom, and then you can put, you can tape it with the 
packing tape, which will yep. seal it, but it won't rip it or anything. And then you can change the date every time you do it. We could do like senior coffee at the library or something. Yeah, like. and then and then you can put the date and the time on a piece of twenty-two cutting. by twenty-eight is a standard poster board size. Twenty-two inches. Okay. So if you do a so it's somewhere around there. Okay. So if you do if you do two feet by what was the other one? Twenty-two. Twenty-two by twenty-eight. Okay, so. To, to, uh, 24 by 30. And you'd be able to do that, right? If it's an option. Yeah. Because I don't know if they... But they're grooved. You've got to fit the sign in the grooves. You can't be bigger than whatever the grooved out right. area is. So right. I can measure it for you. Yeah. But yeah. But you, there, is a, there is an upper limit to how... But if, it, you know, if you wanted to just get... It's so we do one sided it this time. You can position it so it's just one sided. So you get more locations if you have the signs. But I, that might be, you might be able to afford that. Don't order them until you come up to, to, to make sure that we're all And I'll it. find out from him, even if it has to be for the first. Yeah, even for the October. Yeah. You know. It is how the way you should do it, suggest people wear costume. And that's what I was thinking. Um, so I did, after Kelly and I made, the, Kelly made the contact with the library and set up the dates, I did talk to the PTO um, president, and it's on her agenda to do a senior, um, see if we can coordinate a senior child thing, like, because a youth, to say with the school. Yeah. Um, from their end, and she is all excited because I brought up that a lot of people wrote that they want to see like kids reading to seniors or seniors helping kids read. So she's all excited about connecting with the literacy department mm -hmm. at the school and maybe during literacy yeah. night mm -hmm. um, bringing in seniors and getting it on the agenda for the PTO. And I need to make an appointment with Rich. Talk about Sarah said that they could put out games and things like that in the library too, like board games and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's one. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. good. And maybe the November one we can honor our veterans since it will be more than a week or two of Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Um, so, my other thing had been that I had worked diligently at the last couple of days on reviewing um, the camper handbook and making comments that we should review and edit and decide where we're going forward with that and the employee handbook. I've gone through and made edits and one of them, the employee handbook says if the camper is lost, you're to call the rec director or the rec department, which we don't have. So one of the comments is... Check that. Um, and the office. If the camper is lost, that we contact the Rollinsburg Police Department because they are better equipped than anybody else in town, probably, to... There's probably more than one phone call to make, and in a certain, you know, in an order. <laughs> and so I was hoping that if we are going to move forward as a committee, we can review these documents and see if they coincide with the town ones, because I don't think the sexual harassment one which is a couple of pages long in the employee handbook, coincides with the town one, and make sure that they're accurate and legal for us to enforce. And then we'll have a set of policies and procedures already on hand mm -hmm. that then maybe the select board can review based on the recommendation from this committee. So I think it is a good first step, like to get them to where you all think they make good sense, um, in those ways that you just referenced. But then, like the sexual harassment, we do have to cross-reference them with other policies to make sure that every, you know we're not in conflict. We don't have policies in conflict with other mm -hmm. policies. Um, And then it's up to the board whether or not you're expending legal dollars over policies and then to what extent. But if you're going to 
if you're going to do that, it makes sense to do that before the board reviews it, so that you know it's it's less of a lift because if legal's okay with it, then you have less concern in theory. Can we solicit for pro, pro bono work from a um, lawyer? You can solicit all kinds of things. That doesn't mean you're going to give it. No, <laughs> but it's it's worth asking, right? I'm we not talking more, about the town lawyer. I'm we, talking we have about many, there's many lawyers we in have town. Many attorneys in town. That's right. And maybe someone will be willing to review it. Well, it's it's also true that any time I've had a conversation about town topics with any number of any one of our attorneys that lives in town, um, they're very reluctant to give official advice. Mm -hmm. um, You know, I think if they were engineers or some other kind of professional, they, they might be a little bit more, you know, but, but given the nature of liability, like everybody wants to be at arm's length from that. So it's, it's a little bit different from every other kind of expertise. But um, I can ask the few that I'm aware of. So, um, going forward, your decision is going to be made this week, is that? We don't meet this week. Well, we'll so week. you've got your budget workshop on Thursday night, whereby well, that would be whether or not they decide to budget it or include not. the funds or okay. not include the funds. That would be Thursday this week. Yeah. So I, I guess for all of us sitting here, I mean, I, I don't see any sense of us doing any work necessarily until we know that answer, right? I mean, Celia, and that was great of you to take on all that this weekend, but I. I really haven't done anything because I'm, I, I don't know, I was kind of like, well, why bother? We're not going to have a program. I find it, myself, a catch-22. <laughs> I think the, the select board is looking for clearly defined roles so that we don't run into liability issues and they know who's got what so the balls don't drop is what I think I heard tonight. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for that and we don't necessarily want to put the effort and time into it until they make a decision, but that m will affect their decision. Yes, exactly. And it, it is a catch-22. It's a chicken and egg because the more prepared, you know, the better state of affairs from the committee, you know, perhaps less re reluctance on the board's side to fund it, you know. Yes, and, like, and they could be giving you a time frame of saying, in order for this to go forward, this is our last time that we can do it before we could remove it if things don't get done in the time frame in which they'd like to see, or we can contingently approve it. And again, if the time doesn't, if it doesn't get done, then it doesn't go forward. Would you have expected to see more parents from those kids I'm participating in the thing? Absolutely. Up there? I, absolutely. I think we saw one parent. My emails were bombarded with people, and they were not here. Yeah. And I know that maybe I came across the brash in my email when I sent that out, or uninformed, and may have overloaded the emails of the select board. Yes, you did. I just wanted it to be more than Kelly and I speaking on behalf of the program. And you've heard a lot from Kelly and I. We've been before the select board a lot. And I want the whole board, not, maybe not just you, but the whole board, who's not sitting in on these meetings every month, to see that this has an effect on somebody besides Kelly and I. And just because we're invested in this program doesn't mean that we're the only ones that benefit from it. But it would have been nice to have this room packed for them to see that. You can put something in, in an email and send it off, and then you're done. And I think, you know? I think the board is very clear about 
parents value the program. Parents are using the program, so it's clear that they value the program, or they wouldn't be continuing to use the program. It's it's about it's about not just the parents. It's about it's about so many things because, like Kelly said, it's really about community and where do we want to live and what kind of a place do we want to live in. But also, you know, when you post a public hearing for recreation and the programming might be cut, you expect the people that you're going to get are the people who would support the recreation program. But you have to acknowledge that making recreation programming happen is going to be at the expense of something else, or doing it at the expense of doing something as well as it could otherwise be. The other people who would not necessarily care about rec might come out for a public hearing that says, how would you like to use rec funding instead for, you know, X or for Z or for something else? And, you know, so the board is struggling with this decision, but not at all because they don't think the people want it and value it. It's, it's just more about how do you weigh that with everything else because there's just not enough staff and resources to go around. One of the things that was brought up tonight is about what it used to be in the budget in the previous years or before we did this group. One of the things that I think, and I don't, and I'm only me speaking here, not the rest of the board, but if there was a, a dollar amount that was going to be dedicated to rec, I think we should limit it to Ronald's families only. I think, and that, that's what it was when it was previous. It was Ronald's families only. Mm -hmm. As much as we, we tried to get the revenue in, so we opened it up to surrounding communities, but if town dollars are going to go to offset the program, mm -hmm. it should be for our own. That's my opinion. I but. also think some of the behavior issues may be more known. Not that they're going to change, mm -hmm. but just, you know, like currently, Sam is... Yeah, when it's, yeah, 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 yeah. And she wanted to be here tonight. She was working. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we should have an idea. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's not somebody she worked with mm -hmm. or sees all, we have an idea. Mm -hmm. And it's helpful. Mm -hmm. and it is I, helpful. I mean, I was there at the first beginning, but I can't say anything to mm -hmm. anybody. No, I know. That's but hard. so it helps that you for it, it helps you for budgeting because if you're a little bit more aware of what the actual needs are mm -hmm. and how you might need to accommodate for those needs, then you can better budget for those needs. Um, but the program budget still has to acknowledge that you have to budget for those needs. And I but don't in think all, all due respect, though, we did we had a staff member who was in that field. Mm -hmm. Our director of Raleigh was in that field. Well, yeah. well, right, which is really helpful. Yes. But that doesn't mean that we're acknowledging that this individual really needs individualized attention. No, that's or true. That's a higher true. staff camper ratio right. or like like some other exactly. kind of thing. That's the part that's not. But really she had budget. a radar on a lot. Yes. In, in particular instances. So I mean, it's and that's not helpful. like yeah, it, exactly. Well, I think that's really what saved us in right. some of those behavioral right. situations. Right. So we really, when we're interviewing for further staff going forward, we may want to look for something of that sort. And of some, some. I mean, I can to some extent. But I know in the past, and even this summer. This will pay for part of that. What? Pay for what? Part of a student's supervision was paid for by... Not to us. No, it was paid to the person. They just brought their own aid with them to camp? Oh, oh okay. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Because we didn't get any funding from the school. No, no, no. no. Oh, the, okay. I did that in the past. Oh, okay. Um, when I did it, Jill and I both did it. Mm -hmm. um, we each did it one day a week. Mm -hmm. And our big thing was, you know, he only has autism two mm -hmm. days a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And she went on the trips, and I did the day mm -hmm. at camp. Um, this year, it was part-time more than two days. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was. I didn't keep track of it. But... We, we need to know what that is. Either he, either he or she is covered or they're not covered. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and what does the school deem as adequate assistance versus what does the parent think mm -hmm. is adequate assistance and than we 
obligated to fund. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, we, we, so the school is used to these conversations with IEPs all day long, but we, we don't, we're not used to these conversations with what do we have to provide mm -hmm. well, and then what is the school willing to provide and all that. I know in the past it was like, we have this kid who's going to summer program, he needs supervision, what can you do for us? I'll give you two days. And that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know if there's, I don't know where that falls. I don't know. But if that's a restriction, maybe that's a restriction of being in the program. Right. Because yeah. why not? That's all we have funding for. No. If why? So, well, because if somebody has a disability that requires them a certain amount of supervision, we have to provide that. And some that's, kids went to well, camp. I know a family who sent their child that has um, a behavior group. A behavioral mm -hmm. disorder that they were concerned, but the child did fine and didn't need additional support. But they were aware, and they were which ready may to be, put, but that may be putting other campers or the camp itself at risk because we're going to try to pretend there's not a problem when really there might have been a problem. So while that's nice of them to try to get by without additional support, that could have ended badly. But mm -hmm. if somebody has needs, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what we're choosing to fund. We're going to have to fund whatever is necessary, but what is necessary? We don't really know how to quantify and define that, mm -hmm. but yet we're responsible. Yeah. I spoke to um, our new um, special ed teacher that was in the That's one of the things that we can say, but is it legal to say that? Well, that's what you we know? need a ruling then. We need someone to tell us if that's well, and every, a law that we need to follow and not an assumption that's what we need well, to follow. Well, so, so the ADA says that we have to provide accommodations within a certain reason. And what is reasonable, that's where they're saying we should even get a specialist, an attorney in ADA law, mm -hmm. to say when you've got a certain case, you know, if somebody needs something extraordinary that could kill the whole budget, you know, that's when you go to this specialist and say, do you have to accept this circumstance? Do you have to fund this? Mm -hmm. Do you dissolve the program? Do you not allow them in? Do you try to work with them and make the family, you know, share the cost? Like, we don't, we don't know how to do this, and we don't know where the line is, but you know, because reasonable accommodations are not really defined. So, and, and everybody's an, and everybody's an individual with an individual situation. And like I said, I don't even know. I don't even know what the criteria is that the school said. Okay, we'll pay for X number of hours. I don't know where that falls. And and I don't think they're probably going to want to share that formula because that opens them up to their own liabilities for maybe that wasn't sufficient or adequate or. Because so I know same. another student who years ago went to an outside camp every day and had somebody with him, had a power with him every day. So I don't know where that, I don't know. Right, and, and part of it I think is the discretion that a parent has mm -hmm. in when they sign an IEP. The parent gets the final say mm -hmm. in approving or not approving an IEP. And yeah, they can programs an extension though, it's not in their IEP. But well, okay, but it stems from the idea that you have an IEP yeah. because you but, have these needs. But, yeah, but, but even that is only what we're providing. It's not what the town provides. Well, but they're going to be similar, maybe, it seems. Because if somebody has condition X, then they're going to need mm -hmm. Y accommodations. And the school is going to, you know, define why in a certain way. And we might have better legal standing if we define why in the same way as the school, because at least we're aligned. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll see it differently. I don't know. But we don't know how the school comes to their determinations, because we're not special ed experts. Right. You know? So, so this is where it's kind of swampy, and we just don't know what we're doing, mm -hmm. and we need guidance. And, and how do we even start with this?
Kelly, didn't you say since the last meeting you mm -hmm. have reached out to two towns, two towns and gotten how their rec departments deal with this? Yeah, and it's really all about their behavior. But Barrington did tell me though, and I I don't know how that works with them. They have how did she put it? And maybe maybe somebody who has a special ed background needs to make that phone call because something like a a a good relationship with the school so that they can have the parent forward IEP information to them. I, I don't know how that all plays out, but they there was there was definitely a conversation between school and rec. So but I but I know the parent has to okay that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because so, there so, is no releasing of any information. Right. right. Sure. So, so so they did talk to me about that, that they have a really good and I don't know what that means, you know, good relationship with, with the school. I and mean that. it might even be worth having a conversation with the SAU level. Mm -hmm. Who is the domino effect Which, down to Yeah, us. and it's a new person. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. The special ed person? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is, I mean, it's, but, but one of them is that. Still, but one is the other one is still there, right? Isn't, wasn't there two? Yeah, it was a, and SAU, there's one. But the director what, of student the, services. Who's the man that was there that was doing things? I thought there was somebody else in the SAU office that was. Um, I can't think of the name. No. Well, and what's interesting, though, is I talked to the Summersworth work director, and there was no, so that's almost kind of interesting, because then, I, they everybody that. handles it differently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I mean, they have the, they would have the special ed person there, they would have the school same there, and yeah. so I, well, I think in, in, in where in a unique situation, in that it happens at school, you know, that rec is at the school. Yeah. So I think... But isn't it some of those rec is I don't know. No. no. That's our old pines. That's the pines. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right, right by SAU, right? Yeah. And then where the pines is? So I think well, some people, even though they've heard it at a million times that rec is town, not school, mm -hmm. right. they still, it's at school, so they know. Right. about money too we might as well talk about that in that um, I heard Maine is increasing their minimum wage again which is great for them but it kills us um, I think it's going up to 12 bucks an hour this is January cleaning price yeah yeah so we're, we're gonna feel that in a multitude yeah, but of ways for rec you know, to picture things, you, you didn't have to pay main tax. So, right. Right. in the offset of it, you're going to probably be better off. I'm not sure if rec would be affected as much as a full-time person, but you know what I mean? You still have to pay taxes and on it. And most so of you the take it, you take it less, at, sure. less take home. Yeah. And most so, of the kids, that are, most of the people who are working for that are kids that, although they do drive, they could walk if mm -hmm, needed. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. 